Hello everyone, my name is Fasi Kaimam. I'm a physics instructor at Lebawi Academy. So today I'm going to present about energy and the physics of injera for ninth graders. So let's start with definition of energy. Energy is defined as the ability or the capacity to do work. Whenever there is an energy, if we use it, we can do a certain amount of work, meaning in the meantime, energy is transferred from one form to another form. So there are different or various forms of energies. So let us see some types of energies. So the first one is called thermal or heat energy. So heat energy is defined as an energy which is flowing from a hotter object to a colder one until these two objects maintain equal temperature. And the other is light energy. So light energy is one form of electromagnetic radiation. So it is gained from this uh, radiation and we can change this light energy into other forms. The third one is electrical energy. So electrical energy is the energy transferred due to uh, the flow of electric current. And again, when you come to sound energy, sound energy is one form of energy. As we know, waves uh, carry energy. So when we talk about sound energy, this energy uh, transfers uh, due to this sound wave. Let's come to mechanical energy. So one part of mechanical energy is called kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is defined as the energy possessed by an object because of its motion. And basically, we have two types of kinetic energies that are called translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. So in both cases, there is movement of an object. That's why we sometimes call this energy as movement energy. The other one is called chemical energy, okay? This energy is released because of chemical reaction and we can get these energies from different sources like fuel, food and batteries, okay? Nuclear energy, and this nuclear energy is also released when there is a nuclear reaction. For now, the last one is potential energy. And this potential energy is part of mechanical energy. Again, it is categorized into two as gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy. So both energies are just stored energies. Okay? So when we say gravitational potential energies, these are the energies stored in an object because of its elevation above the ground. Whereas elastic potential energy, this is the energy stored in an elastic material. Okay? So that stretched or compressed material stores some amount of energy. When we release this deforming force, it regains its original shape or size. Now, for the time being, let's select one of these uh, energies, which is called heat energy. So to transfer heat, we have three different methods that are called conduction, convection, and radiation. So when we say conduction, it is a process where particles transfer energy due to collisions. Whereas when you come to convection, it is basically uh, used by fluids or liquids in particular, and there is an actual movement of uh, molecules, and as a result, heat can be transferred uh, from a certain hot source to that molecule, okay? The third one is called radiation, and in this case, uh, there is an electromagnetic radiation uh, used to transfer the energy. Okay, so let's come to the other point, which is called the law of conservation of energy. So the law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but energy can be transformed from one form to another form. So let's see one example. For instance, if I take this pen, in this case, uh, this pen is placed at a certain height above the ground, assuming that there is no any energy uh, loss because of external factors. At this time, this pen will acquire or possess a certain amount of gravitational potential energy. So when I release this pen, it will move towards the ground because of gravity, because of downward pulling force, okay? But in the meantime, when the height decreases, the potential energy is decreasing. But some amount of energy is converted into kinetic energy. Therefore, energy can be transferred from one form to another form, but total energy in a system is constant, or it remains constant. Now, where did we get these energies, okay? We have different resources, and basically we classify this energy resource into two as renewable and non-renewable energy resources. So when we say renewable, as the name indicates, it can be renewed, we can regenerate such kind of energies and basically when you come to our country, uh, 
uh, Ethiopia generates renewable energies from hydroelectric power, from sun energy or solar energy, from biomass energy, wind energy, and geothermal energy. Okay? And the other type is called non-renewable energy resources. So we cannot renew or regenerate these energies. Once we use them, then we cannot uh, regain or regenerate such kind of energies. And basically, these energies are like uh, natural gases, nuclear energy, uh, fuels and coals are examples of these non-renewable energy resources. Now, so far, we have seen different types of energies. We defined energy, the law of conservation of energy and so on. Now, let's try to integrate this concept with real life, okay? So basically, uh, we know what injera means. So injera is a large pancake, which is like bread, and most of Ethiopians uh, eat injera. And studies show that about 70% of uh, Ethiopians eat injera. And this injera is baked on a bakeware called metad uh, in Amharic. Okay, it's basically made of clay. It is circular in shape, and its diameter is about 45 to 60 centimeter. Let's come to injera baking process. Okay. So first we need to have a flour and we have to mix this with water, okay? And then to have a fermentation, we have to add a sort of starter. In Amharic, we call this as irsho, okay? And then we have to stay for three to four days so that it will be fermented. And finally, as you can see from the diagram, we can just pour this butter of teff on that metad so that uh, if we stay it for two to three minutes, then we can see this uh, icon-like structure or texture of injera and it is affected by just the energy transferred from the metal towards this butter of teff okay and basically in this case from the metal to this butter of injera heat will be transferred through conduction process now we have two different ways of energy sources so the first one is biomass so biomass are organic matters, as you can see, that we get from sewage or different residues like animal residue, industrial residue, and uh, forestry and crops residues, okay? And uh, in Ethiopian context, we basically use dry wood as just uh, heat sources. So in most Ethiopian households, injera baking is carried out uh, using an open fire, as I have tried to explain, like uh, uh, using dry wood, and we need to have three stones, we call it gulicha, and we can bake uh, that injera over the metad uh, by putting this metad over these three stones, okay? Now, how is energy transformed? This is a basic point. This is the point that we want to integrate the concept of energy with injera. So, initially, this dry wood was a plant, so it absorbs some amount of sunlight and changes into chemical energy, because of photosynthesis, you know what photosynthesis means. It is a process of converting this sunlight energy into chemical energy. And then once it stored that chemical energy, then it becomes dry, we can cut it and we can uh, fire it. In that case, we are changing that chemical energy into heat energy. And again, that heat energy will transform towards the butter of injera and stored as chemical energy. So this is a way how energy is transformed from one form to another form. The second point is electricity. So we just gain energy from hydroelectric power as the Ethiopian context. Currently, we are trying to build a dam. And again, we are to increase additional energy that we gain from electricity. So if we use electrical method or such kind of uh, backware, in this case, we have to use electrical energy and convert into chemical energy. Basically, we have a dam means we store some amount of water on that dam and there is a spillway. So through that spillway, this water flows above a certain height. That means it has initially a certain amount of gravitational potential energy. But after a while, when it starts to move towards the ground, since the height is decreasing, energy is converted from potential to kinetic, which is translational kinetic energy, okay? But once it reaches to the blade of the turbine, it touches that blade of turbine so that the turbine, the shaft, and the coil wire, which is connected with the shaft, all this system will rotate about a certain axis, meaning it is changed into rotational kinetic energy, okay? Now, again, when you come to the generator part, this generator has a magnet to the left and right side. In the middle, there is a coil wire, which is rotating because of this uh, motion so that 
electricity will be induced in that rotating wire and we can uh, generate that electrical energy. And once we get that electrical energy, since we have electric method, we can connect uh, with a source so that that electric method has a very high resistant wire inside it, uh, below that clay, so that it absorbs that energy. Since it has a very high resistance, heat will be generated by that wire. As a result, that heat will be transferred from coiled hot wire towards the metal. And again, that metal will give that heat towards this, the butter of TEF. And that butter of TEF acquires some amount of uh, chemical energy. So in this case, we have another uh, way of energy transformation as compared to the biomass process, okay? Now let's see the comparison between biomass and electricity. These two processes have difference and similarities. So when you come to biomass, for instance, it is abundant, it is renewable, okay? Again, it causes food prices to rise because we use grains to make ethanol and it has greenhouse effect, okay? And transporting such kind of raw materials is not efficient. But when you come to electricity, there is no greenhouse gases and it can generate lots of electricity. It is renewable, it changes the ecosystem of the surrounding and it's very expensive to build. Now let's come to other machines. As you can see the general diagram from uh, uh, the screen, if you have a certain machine, when it gets some amount of input energy, that machine converts some of this energy into useful output energy, but some of the energy will be wasted. According to first law of thermodynamics, the total energy must be conserved. It is related with the law of conservation of energy, but there is always energy loss. It doesn't mean that energy is destroyed, but it is changed into unwanted form, okay? So let's see some practical examples which support this idea. As you can see from the diagram, this electric light bulb uh, absorbs electrical energy and its purpose is to give light, but in the meantime, it also gives us heat, but heat energy is lost for us, okay? So in this case, energy is transferred from electrical energy into light and heat energy. This is one way of energy transformation. And the other one is microphone. So microphone absorbs sound energy and this microphone converts this sound energy into electrical energy and heat energy again. And the other one is car engine. If you take a car, for instance, that car absorbs or takes uh, chemical energy and it converts into kinetic, but uh, while in motion there is friction and as a result it will be changing into heat and sound energy. So this heat and sound energy is unwanted energy form, but kinetic energy is the useful output energy. Now let's recap what we have done so far. So we have seen what energy means. We defined it as energy is the capacity or the ability to do work. And the other one is law of conservation of energy. And it states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. And we have two different energy resources. The first one is biomass and the second one is electricity. So biomass is plant materials in animal waste or residues. We can take this as source of fuel. But when you come to electricity, we generate this energy from hydroelectric stations and we can use it to operate machines. And that's all for today. Thank you.